Did Rand ever write on the sub subject of vigilante justice? Um, also, what are your thoughts on art promoting uh, vigilantism, such as Equalizer or Death Wish? Um, so, of course, you know, I mean, it depends what you mean by vigilante justice, and I, and I want to be... I want to be careful here because I haven't thought about the definition of vigilante justice. I mean, is vigilante justice um, the idea of in a lawful society taking the law into your own hands? Or is, would you include under vigilante uh, justice uh, in a unlawful or in a, in a civilization that's breaking down, in a sense, taking the law, but there is not much law into your own hands. And, and I do think there's a significant difference between the two. So, of course, the one example of what you could think of as vigilante justice, but I'm not sure if it falls. I'm not sure. It depends how you exactly define vigilante. And I don't have a good definition right off the top here. Um, is, you know, uh, um, oh, my God. Ragnar... Uh, in um, in uh, Atlas Shrugged, the pirate, right? I mean, what is he doing? There is a law of the land, um, and he is violating that law. The law is completely irrational. The law is, the law is, um, you know, the, the government is using force against its own citizens. There's no protection of individual rights. There's a complete abandonment of the role of government as protecting individual rights. It's now just a rush to thuggery. And uh, Ragnar goes out and builds a warship and, um, and goes out and, and um, you know, takes the wealth that's been stolen by the government from the producers and gives it back to them, and gives it back to them. So in that sense, one of the most heroic characters in Iron Man's novels under those circumstances and willing, willing to suffer the consequences of being caught is a pirate who is taking back what was his. So I would say, first of all, vigilante just, this kind of justice, in sense outside of the law, uh, must be just, right? Must be just objectively not just, just subjectively, but, but objectively just. Uh, to the best of one's ability, it has to be, uh, it, it, you know, it can't just be acting on emotion. It has to be thought through and, uh, and, and secured that there's justice. I mean, the real problem with vigilanteism and why Ayn Rand spoke against it in a free society or even in a semi-free society is its lack of objectivity. It's, it's the danger of losing objectivity, right? And that's why it's really, really important. It's really, really important to, if you, if, if whoever does this, whoever does it, and I'm not advocating for it, but in the case of Ragnar, for example, and we'll get to Equalize and Death Wish, to do it in a way that is objectively demonstrable to the better people in the culture, to the people, you know, in the culture that, that matter, that and, and if you remember, Ragnar keeps, he keeps, the pirate keeps really, really, really detailed records of who he's taking the money from, who the money actually belongs to. Uh, he is clearly uh, doing this as an act of justice, of objective justice. Now, I have to say that I really enjoy uh, most, not all, vigilante movies. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed the Equalizer movie one and two with um, with uh, oh my god one of my favorite actors whose name has slipped my mind but one of you is going to tell me who it is um, right and so uh, uh, yeah Denzel Washington is the actor so I really enjoyed the Equalizer movies Death Wish I watched in the 70s, and, and I think a lot of the sympathy and a lot of the energy around Death Wish was, uh, Death Wish was, uh, Bronson was the actor, and, and it had a lot to do with the fact that during the late 70s, 
crime was rampant. So if you take Donald Trump's statement about carnage in the streets of America, I mean, it has no objective merit in the world in which we live in today, it has no reality. But in the period of the 1970s, there was really uh, massive amounts of violence, particularly in New York City. New York City was unbelievably dangerous and violent. You, you wouldn't walk in Central Park, Park during the day, never mind at nighttime. And uh, there was a sense that the police were not doing their job, that there was no justice. That Also, this is a time of, of criminal justice reform, a bad form of it, where violent criminals were let loose and, and let go, where, 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 where people were getting relatively short sentences for violent crimes. And there was just a sense in American society that there was nobody standing up for the innocent victims of violent crime. And uh, Charles Bronson, I think it was Charles Bronson, uh, the actor in, in Death Wish represents kind of a, 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 an everyday man who stands up against the violent thugs and then has to protect himself and, and defend himself. And he, so he goes around, you know, first it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's kind of encounter, he's not looking for it, but ultimately, if I remember the movies right, he is going out and looking for the rapists and the murderers and killing it. And, and let, let me be very clear. You know, one should never, what should try never to get into a situation where you live in a society where that is the case. Because that's anarchy. And once people start taking the law into their own hands, everything breaks down. Now, in the case of Atlas Shrugged, taking the law into your own hands is part of the effort the strikers are making to bring about the end of civilization. So it's not neutral. It's not trying to save civilization. It's an effort to destroy civilization because once the rule of law is gone, once there is no government, once what we have is anarchy and violence in the streets, civilization is finished. And in a sense, what the strikers are trying to do is accelerate the end of civilization. And in that sense, the the um, um, the pirate Ragnar is doing what he's doing in the context of a bigger mission. He's not just doing it as a vigilante, as I'm going to go after these guys. He's doing it as part of the bringing down the world. He's doing it part of a war, a war that John Galt and the rest. And if you haven't read Atlas Shrugged, close your ears. The war that John Galt and the rest have initiated against. You know, think about it as a war of independence. So it's not a simple act of vigilantism. And, and indeed, if you start engaging in vigilantism, and if you start embracing that idea, what you get is the rule, the, the destruction of civilization, the move towards anarchy, the move towards violence. And, and while I enjoy the movies, because I enjoy the idea of justice, and it horrifies me, when government doesn't execute that justice, and I can sympathize emotionally, and that's what they, the movies capture, is that sympathize emotionally with the idea of going out and striking back at the bad guys when the government doesn't. I, I, I don't think, and, and Ayn Rand wrote about this, I don't think, unless it's part of a bigger plan, I, I don't think, and unless civilization is really collapsing, that it's justified that it's legit to do, right? As long as we live in, in a semi-free society, as long as we're not in rebellion, which is what the strikers are, as long as we're not in rebellion against the society in which we live. But I have to say, I, you know, I enjoy revenge movies. So um, uh, there was a movie I saw recently about a woman who is whose husband and kids are brutally murdered and because of corruption in the legal system, the murderers get off and she goes and gets trained as this super duper amazing assassin and she comes back and she kills them all. You know, how can you not like it, right? But I can like it as art and, and, and you know, still believe that there are mechanisms in a civilized society, which I still think we have, 
to deal with the real bad guys without resorting to individuals taking guns and, and dealing with it independently. And, and this is, of course, what happens in anarchy. And anarchy, we go back to dueling in the streets. We go back to the, the absence of the objectivity of due process, the absence of, you know, there's a whole system of law. And it's pretty beautiful. If you really think about our, our, our criminal legal system, how amazing it is. We have a whole system of due process. We have a whole system of what is legitimate evidence collection. We have a whole system of a trial by jury with a bunch of procedural requirements, all to protect the innocent, all to make it difficult to prosecute criminals because we are so, it's so important for us to be objective and to protect the innocent, to, 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 we are so fearful of, of power in the hands of, uh, of, of those who have guns, who can then, uh, you know, pervert it, distort it, or just get sloppy. We want to, we, we really take seriously, or at least the law takes seriously, in, its, in the way it's been created in this country, is the assumption that you are innocent until proven guilty. And... That is such an important feature of the law, and we built so many of those protections that then to say, well, you know, but if you feel like an injustice has been committed, go out into the streets and kill whoever. I, I, I mean, that is devastating. That is horrible. So, no, I, 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 I um, you know, it's the rule of the jungle. It's really, really bad. And again, in the context of Atlas Shrugged, it is within the context of a revolution. It's in the context of bringing down civilization, of declaring war on civilization. And that's, that's, that's something completely different. Revolution is something different. So while I enjoy vigilante movies, guilty, guilty as charged, um, I find vigilanteism abhorrent in a civilized society and when vigilanteism is the only way to achieve justice then it's time it's time for the revolution it's time to move to another country or it's time to replace the government in the existing country it's time to to you know uh to 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 to, to revolt to really have a revolution so yeah i mean i i, I want to emphasize how important i think the the, the, the nature of our legal system and its attempt to prosecute justice objectively is, it's, it's one of my arguments against anarchism, that all breaks down, it all goes away. There is no objectivity in the prosecution of criminals in uh, an anarchist society. Indeed, I've seen many anarchists argue that in an anarchist society, there is no criminal law, there is only civil law. If somebody murders you, your wife will sue them. I mean, that is such an evasion of reality that it's, it's mind-boggling. And, of course, again, by what process is that lawsuits prosecuted? Well, whatever, whatever, the, whatever the, the parties have negotiated or whatever the, whatever the two legal organizations, the two police organizations of the competing parties have decided or whoever, you know, objectivity is out the window. In a sense, truth is ultimately out the window.